What was the main takeaway of this survey that you did of some 1,100 business leaders across the Asia Pacific, which I might add was started in May and ended in what early summer or mid summer, just as the trade tensions were starting to bubble? Well, thanks, Steve. It's great to be here. Um, first of all, the, uh, this, we do a survey for APAC Summit every year as the knowledge partner. And this year makes it very interesting just because of what's happening around the world uh, these days. So our, our survey actually uh, covered uh, close to 1,200 CEOs across each of the, uh, covering all of the uh, 21 uh, APAC uh, economies. How fearful are they? When you say fearful, what do you mean? Well, the risk appetite, given the uncertainty when you have such two largest economies in the world engaging in a trade war. I'll put it this way. I think the CEOs are very agile and they adapt. They look at the clearly very challenging situations at this point when the two largest economies in the world are having trade tensions, frictions, it's going to affect everybody. But there are opportunities and CEOs are looking at opportunities. And in fact, if you look at the survey results, which covered, as you said, from early May to around mid-July. And so prior to that, there was a lot of trade tensions already in terms of the talks yeah. building up to it. And then early July, July 6th, was the first implementation, actually, right. of, um, of the U.S. tariff on Chinese goods. Right. If you look at the overall survey results of the CEOs, I think the good news is 35% of the CEOs across the APAC economies remain very confident about revenue growth over the next 12 months. Now, putting that What about the other 65? Well, but 35% is actually very high. Now, when I'm talking about very confident, right? And that is a very pretty big, good number. Yeah. So if I compare that to last year, last year was 37%. So it was only a drop of two percentage points. That's not big at all, right. given what's going on. Now, but if you take deeper into that, into that number, you actually see some big differences. So if you look at the U.S. CEOs, the Thailand CEOs, where they're, they're pretty very, confident. They're very confident. Their number is actually, you're talking about 57%, Because their economies are doing well. What about exactly. China, though? China is the other, on the, at the other side of the spectrum, which is, you're exactly right, which is in the 20s. Similar to Mexico, which is, I think, 21%. So much lower than the average of 35%. Two nations in the That's crosshairs right. of Donald Trump. That's right. So they're uncertain. I know 51% of respondents said they plan to raise investment levels. And that's a number that's gone up from 43% a couple of years ago. Now, so they're going to raise investment levels, but have they reallocated where that investment might go? Because you told me pre-interview, you said they're not just sitting around on their hands waiting. Yep. They're reallocating, are they? They're reallocating and looking at their strategy, like I said. They're looking at where the opportunities are. So with a net increase of 51%, oh, sorry, of net 51% of the CEOs saying, I will increase the level of investments over the next 12 months. That's a big, that's a pretty good answer. And again, tell, again tells you that the CEOs are not sitting there and just waiting for the impact. They're looking, aggressively looking at their strategy. How do they put their investments to maximize their profits going forward? To answer your question, in terms of the top, where they're putting their investments, Vietnam continues to be the top choice, followed by China. Vietnam as an alternative to China? No. Nope. Or it's just on its own merit? On its own merit. And it could be an alternative to China. If you look at some of the supply chain adjustments that is happening and will happen more, potentially, if the trade tension doesn't, doesn't go away. Very quickly, though, 19% said they're facing more barriers in cross-border trade. Is that a high number? Is that indicating that protectionism is on the rise or the fear of protectionism is on the rise? That number is actually pretty consistent to, to last year. Okay. So that number in itself is not saying it's getting worse. But there, is, there are certain areas where it is worse than before and the CEOs are getting more worried than before. And okay. one of which is just this um, uh, movement of data right. across, across borders, as you can you can probably understand right. why with Europe's GDPR that came into effect right. and with China's uh, cybersecurity law, yep. CEOs, companies are adjusting their data strategy. 
how do you manage data? How do you ensure you comply with right. the new laws and rules to manage that data, which right. is very important right. uh, in terms of moving that trade around.